Three Recipes for Puffball Mushrooms, William Hovey Smith, 2013. I'm the author of Backyard Deer Hunting, and we do hunter gathering, and now we're definitely in the gathering stage. This is Hovey Smith, the Backyard Sportsman, with a view from a YouTube land. And today what I want to talk about is a puffball mushroom. And here we have one saying here. Now I just bought this day before yesterday from my sister's yard. Now I still got the dirt on it. But I'm going to show you how to clean this up and actually utilize it. Now what can you do with it, you ask? Well, you can do many things with it. You can batter it, put a little flour and salt on it, and you can do this with it. Yep. Yeah. Just fry it up a little bit, and it turns out to be quite edible and tasty. Or, you can take it and use it as a filler in a meatloaf, as in here. Or, you can use it in soups. Now, I was planning to use tomato soup, but I didn't have any. Okay, we walked up on some. I did have a can of tomato paste. All right. That's with some water over there on the stove. I had a can of salmon. All right. That went in it. I've got some cut up onions and bell pepper here, and I put a teaspoon of salt and about a half a teaspoon of black pepper in it. And in it is going to go the puffball mushroom. Now we're going to saute the mushroom a little bit with these peppers and onions, and then add that to the soup and let it just thoroughly, thoroughly cook and get up to, you know, a good boiling temperature and stay there for a while. But I want to bring up the camera and show you how to clean this mushroom. We've now washed the mushroom a little bit, but you see there's still some dirt hanging on the roots. Now don't be too upset about that, because that is going to come off right now with that cut. And you don't use any of that, so that goes thrown away. Now we have our ceramic knife here. And ceramic knives are the best for working mushrooms because there's no possibility of them tainting any delicate flavors uh, with metal. So, okay. Now, look and see what you have here. This is pure, white, and beautiful mushroom meat. Now, sometimes uh, you'll get a few beetles in it, and that's okay. You just cut out the barrels and flick them out if they're still wiggly. But uh, go ahead and just cut off the skin. So you remove all of the skin altogether. You, it is edible. I mean, you could eat it. There's nothing wrong with it so far as health-wise goes, uh, if you cook it first. But it is a bit on the leathery side. Oh, say about like the skin on squid, I believe, when it's cooked. That's what it reminds me of mostly. All right, so we have a nice piece there. It's a little dark here on the bottom. Uh, you're fastidious, you can cut that away. It's where the spores have just started to make. Okay, so that's a good piece. Cut that out, cut that out, and we'll discard that. Actually, uh, you can use a mushroom even if it has started to sporulate and this is dark on the inside. Again, it's still safe to eat, although it will have a different texture and taste if you let it get that far along. The reason you don't see these in stores is because the picking time is so critical. The one I'm showing you right now is just absolutely prime. And these things can get big, by the way, uh, up to, well, soccer ball size. And out in the western states, they just commonly take them and put them in butter and have mushroom steaks. Yeah! They need something besides beef out there to eat. So almost anything will do and mushrooms are good. There is one mushroom that looks something like a puffball that is toxic, but that one is dark brown and it also has a very crinkled finish. You'll notice the dome on this is not rigid. It's sort of dissected a little bit, but it's not up in hard, thick ridges. And so this one is quite all right. You just cut the cap off and try to save as much meat as you can. 
This is probably the most delicate part of the whole business right here. Oh, good. But this is really beautiful stuff. Mmm. Oh, oh, it smells good. Now, particularly this cook part over here. Guarantee you, you fry up a little like this in uh, ordinary flour and uh, a little salt and uh, canola oil, or olive oil, or anything, <laughs> it does quite well. And just dice it up in pieces. You see how evenly it cuts. Uh, I suppose this is something like tofu. <laughs> Except that it's uh, considerably less moisture than tofu typically. But this is beautiful. No insects, no holes. These mushrooms grow best in open fields where they can get some sun. And typically they're spring mushrooms, although they can be any time of year. And about three or four days after a good soaking rain is when these really start to come. The richer the soil, the bigger the mushroom gets, and the better the meat looks. But that is just absolutely beautiful. So now, uh, we're going to go ahead and saute these and put them in the soup and show you what a meal looks like. Well, how did we do? Pretty good, actually. Uh, these are very good indeed. Uh, everybody likes these. Now, the meatloaf, uh, you can see the puffball mushroom here. And it turned out quite well. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely deer sausage that I cooked it with. Now, about the soup. You can see the puffball mushrooms floating in it, as well as bits of the fish. So that's, uh, well, that's a reasonable spoonful. Taste of fish, salt, onions, bell peppers, and you get a little hint of fungi, not much from the mushroom. Actually, these mushrooms are very bland indeed. And they feel good in the mouth. Uh, you can tell the kids that these are uh, Sugarless marshmallows. No. Now that is right good. And the whole meal is right good. Now if you should be fortunate enough to get enough mushrooms, uh, these can also be dried and canned in jars and last indefinitely. I am coming along with my eight book ebook series on muzzleloading guns. And right now we have available muzzleloaders for hunters, buying used muzzleloading guns, and cleaning and maintaining your muzzleloader. Now, for regular books, I have crossbow hunting, extreme muzzleloading, and practical bow fishing, and all of these are also available as e-books. For more information on my books, e-books, blogs, and over 200 videos, Go to my website, www.hovysmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.